Now, I also uh, have a few questions about Germany. So Germany's yeah. economy has, uh, I think it is now negative now yeah. Uh, yeah. due to many reasons, but one of the most important probably is that energy uh, cost has gone, really has gone up, et cetera. Now, I have some profound question about Germany. You see, Germany as a country seems really feel bad about what happened during the World War II, during the Holocaust, what they did for, you know, they, they did to the Jews, the Jewish. Uh, they killed us because Hitler killed the 6 million Jews. But they also killed the 27 million Soviet people. Mm -hmm. Out of that, I think 19 of them are civilians. Mm -hmm. They don't seem particularly feel guilty towards the Russians. Why is that? <laughs> that is a very, very good question. Um, um, it has never been internalized in Germany to anything like the extent that the um, Holocaust, the extermination of the Jews has been killed, uh, has been become internalized. The, the, the Germans don't seem to um, feel this in the way that they should. There have been attempts to try and build up a relationship with Russia since then. There have been, I mean, some Germans are conscious of this and have internalized it and do say to themselves, well, what we did in Russia was terrible and we should try and find a way to establish, you know, a good relationship with the Russians in their interests, in our interests, and to some extent to make up for what we did. But, but this has never been the prevailing and dominant view. Um, there's always been a powerful sentiment in Germany that sees Russia as, as a perennial enemy and which still feels that uh, Russia is a country that should be defeated and um, in some way and that the so-called Russia problem should be resolved by in a sense breaking up the country and causing it to go away. And by the way, if the German, you've, that's not a sentiment that is unique to Germany. You will find that in other European countries also. I mean, Britain, for example, lots of people in Britain think this way. So I think one of the reasons why the Germans have never internalized this and understood this is partly precisely because this is a kind of European consensus that Russia is this problem. It's not really Europe. It's too big. It's too powerful. It's too mm -hmm. different from the rest of Europe to ever really be a part of Europe. And it's a threat to Europe. It's a threat to our European civilization, our garden, <laughs> as, you know, Josip Borrell said. And, of course, the other side of it is this, that if you're looking at this from a specifically German point of view, the Germans... Um, like to talk of themselves as being a European country. They talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, a European Germany in Europe. But the practical reality is that the Germans see the European systems as institutions that ultimately Germany controls. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's taken mm -hmm. for granted there. And if another country even more powerful than themselves, oh. a country that is arguably European, which is Russia, eventually establishes itself in Europe and starts acting as a rival to Germany in Europe and, worse still, integrates itself into the European structures. Then Germany, from being dominant, will become subordinate. And that is something that no political class ever wants to see. Yeah, and then, the, then my uh, <laughs> fundamental question is another one, is that um, clearly Germany wants to dominate Europe, right? And that's why both the United Kingdom and the United States see that as a, a problem, right? They're always very careful with the Germany. They kind of are mindful about the German ever since, I guess, World War One. So yeah. that's why in the Ukraine war, the purpose of that is to keep the Russian out, to keep the United States in, keep Germany down. Well, yeah. if, if that's so, uh, I always wonder why do the United States and the United Kingdom allow Germany to unify? What what was the thinking back then? 
Well, well, of course, there were many people in Britain, especially, including our previous Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, who were strongly yeah. opposed to German unification. I mean, she, okay. she actually went to Moscow and told Gorbachev, for heaven's sake, stop this thing. This is, a, this is dangerous for Europe. And uh, please, please prevent it happening. The deal that was done then, and this is, you know, we, we are talking about an actual deal. I mean, it was negotiated. The Germans discussed this at the time with the Americans. They said, look, we will unify. We will dominate Europe, but we will dominate Europe on your behalf. We will act in effect as your, uh, 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 you know, your, your local enforcer in Europe. And that's um, what happened. And one, one has to understand that after the Second World War, the German political elite and its intelligence agencies and all of this became very, very closely integrated into the American system. And it, it was an easy thing for the Germans at that time to, uh, to do. You know, to, to, they come along and say, look, we will dominate Europe. We won't um, cause trouble to you by doing that. We will actually make sure that in any major crisis that you find yourself in, we will be there to support you. Now, Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, um, in the early 2000s, um, he comes from Saxony. He comes, it's, he comes also from Western Germany, but it's, you know, the more Eastern parts of Western Germany. He, he took a different view. He mm -hmm. wanted to have Germany pursue, conduct more independent policies. He was a supporter of the historic policies um, that Germany used to have uh, before the First World War, in the 19th century, the sort of Bismarckian policy, which is that Germany and Russia are two countries that have much in common with each other. They should be friends. They should work together. Bismarck once said, the, you know, the secret of success in policy is a good treaty with Russia. And Bismarck also understood that when the Germans and the Russians are working together, you don't just get peace in Europe, you also get a situation where Germany is extremely strong in Europe. So that was Gerhard Schroeder's policy. So there was this enormous effort to get him out, to marginalise him, to drive him out of the political system. And it was successful. And the pro-American uh, Atlanticist faction in Germany won through. And we saw that this policy of Germany dominating Europe but on America's behalf, in the end, was the one that won out. Yeah, but it's hurting Germany, right? I mean, what they're yeah. doing now is very self-destructive, right? They're almost like their hatreds lead to their self-destruction. It's just not, I don't think it's logical, right? Their their energy yeah. crisis has gone up. I mean, that's why they, they have, they're getting to the negative terms, you know, territories in terms of their economy. So... It is a it is completely illogical. And of course, you mention energy, but of course, which has been Germany's most important trading partner in the last couple of years? It's been China, Russia and China. So Germany forged this big, successful relationship with Russia based on energy, but also German businesses were establishing themselves increasingly in Russia. Russia was starting to look like Germany's economic hinterland. It was a very, very stable, good relationship. And of course, Germany also had this very strong relationship with China. It was the country where um, Germany was exporting many of its consumer goods, its uh, machine tools, all of those kind of things. Things, by the way, which China can make itself, but it suited China to buy them from Germany. And this whole complex Germany, Russia, China. Yeah. Made a great deal of sense for Germany. Yes. But of course, it did not make sense for the United States. So the Americans were able to use the political leverage that they have in Germany effectively to get the Germans to swerve and change their policies. And um, it's not just against Russia now, it's also against China as well. Uh, the German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock says incredible things about China. I mean, incredibly horrible things about China, completely contrary to German national interests. But 
this is the direction that Germany has taken. Now, there, there, there is a reaction within Germany. Um, we, we've seen that the alternative for Germany party, the IFD, is now rising in strength. We also understand, I understand that there's also now been moves on the left of politics in Germany also to try to, um, you know, oppose this, these policies. Um, but it's clearly a long and very, very difficult battle. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that happened, and it was partly intended and cleverly intended, but also it rose from within Germany itself, the green movement in Germany has defined itself very much as a Atlanticist movement, yeah. whilst at the same time, in effect, welcoming the process of German deindustrialization uh, for ideological reasons. So, um, which of course suits the Americans very well. Yeah. And by the way, when you're saying that Annalena Burbach, he, she was one of the things she said, you know, China is such a like a horrible country. It's hard to live in the same planet, something like that. Right. Is yeah, that yeah. I think that's what you're referring to. And the netizens in China's answer is, well, maybe she can move to the moon or to the Mars because China is not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. but but. But I, I mean, it's, it was a terrible thing to say and a crazy thing to say, and it does, mm -hmm. but it does reflect her mindset. And as has been pointed out by many people, even though the Greens, the, the maximum that they've ever, uh, you know, managed to win in an election is around fifteen percent of the vote, mm -hmm. and yet ideologically they are very much the I, the ascendant party in Germany at the moment. They are enormously strong in the media. They have um, um, strong support within, um, you know, the universities, the intellectual elite, yeah. the young people, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's not a view that reflects what most Germans think, but it's a view that reflects what a lot of people, the more ideologically focused people in Germany think. And that makes it, that makes it particularly dangerous. Yeah. I think that's all I have for now. 